I'm Chief Meteorologist Candace Campos here in the News 6 Digital Weather Center talking activity in the tropics, or actually lack of activity in the tropics. So I'm going to start off this video by saying disclaimer, this is not us complaining. I can speak for the entire team where I say, I would love to show this graphic. No new tropical development expected in the next seven days, all season long. But unfortunately, even though we are looking at a slower than normal start to the season, does not mean that it's going to be a slow season. There is no correlation with that. I want to start off this video by saying that. So let's talk about milestones during a typical, an average season. The typical first time we get a, our first named storm is usually around June 20th. Taping this video, it is June 18th, and there is nothing brewing in the tropics. So we're going to surpass that. Uh, the first hurricane usually comes around August 11th, and we normally get our first major hurricane around September 1st or so. So again, we at this point in time of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season, it's a slower than normal season. One of the bigger examples when we talk about a slower than normal start to the season is uh, 2004. So 2004, we didn't get a name until August first, and that was Alex. And then, of course, we remembered what 2004 also brought in. It was one of the most devastating seasons on record uh, for its time where we had back-to-back -back landfalling storms here in central Florida. So just because it's a slow start does not mean it's going to be a slow season. Colorado State University, NOAA, all preseason outlooks, all indicating that the factors for an active season is certainly still out there. So let's talk about, well, here in the Atlantic, we haven't picked up any name storm so far this year. The Pacific has certainly woken up. This is the fifth, count them, the fifth name storm of the Pacific hurricane season. And it is now a hurricane. We're talking about Hurricane um, Eric. And Hurricane Eric, by the way, is certainly a storm that could be one of the strongest storms so far of the season for the Pacific. So let me show you this graphic right here. Um, you can see that the forecast cone shows it potentially turning into a major hurricane as it approaches the coast of Mexico by Thursday and Friday of this week. Now, Eric comes after four other storms within the last nine, 10 days where we've had name storm after name storm after name storm in this same area. So while the Pacific has certainly ramped up its uh, activity here across the tropical Atlantic, i.e. the Caribbean, the Gulf, and the Atlantic, things have been looking calm. I don't like saying the Q word, the quiet word. I don't like saying that. Um, but there's a couple reasons why we get these kind of stretches where things are super quiet and then super active. And that's what we call the MJO. It's kind of a kind of a weather phenomenon that basically acts like invisible waves that kind of traverse the equator and they bring periods of stormy and then quiet weather. Right now, the Atlantic is under kind of that quiet stem of the MJO. Along with that, we're looking at a whole lot of Saharan dust still kind of covering and coating most of the tropical Atlantic. All good news. That means that at this point in time, most of our long range models that we're looking at really not picking up much in the uh, in the activity category for another couple weeks. So I would say we could almost go all the way through mid-July until we actually get something significant out there in the tropics. So again, we're not complaining, but I also wanted to really highlight that just because it's a slow start to, to the season doesn't mean it's going to be a slow season. On the contrary, we have several examples, and I have more of those examples on this article a little further down uh, if you scroll down on this page. But a quick look at what some of the names we will be hearing over the next couple of months because hurricane season is not a sprint. It is a marathon, and it is a marathon that tends for us here in Central Florida to kick up later on in the season. You can see names like Andrea will be our first one. I know everyone's very concerned always about the I name storms for obvious reasons. We have have certainly had a, our fair share of I name storms. The I storm for this year is Imelda, um, and then it goes all the way through Wendy. So the, that's the uh, overall recap of what's going on right now in the tropics, i.e., Nothing is going on in the tropics, and I don't think that we're going to be getting much of activity, at least for the next couple of weeks. So does that mean just sit back and relax and uh, kind of not worry about the tropics? No. Take the time to uh, look at your 
hurricane kits? What do you have in your supply kits? What do you not have? Do you have enough batteries? How old are those batteries? Uh, when's the last time you kicked up that generator? Things like that. This is the time to do it where you're not stressed. You have the time. Uh, you're not maybe rushing the kids to school and whatnot. And maybe you have a little more opportunities on the weekend where you don't have uh, practices and games and things like that to get to. Maybe this is something that maybe we work on over the next couple of weekends just to kind of prep ourselves. Always preparing for the worst, hoping for the best. Again, hurricane season officially runs through November 30th. Um, I'm also linking further down on this article our hurricane headquarters. It's a great resource. There's also a printable um, hurricane list, um, a little checklist you can print out. You can also, you know, pass it along to other family members or get the family involved. Uh, so that way everyone can kind of be prepped and ready for whatever may come our way. Although nothing soon, nothing imminent, but certainly something we'll be watching over the next couple of months.